Hello and welcome to another Roberts Revival R250 fix, hopefully. Uh, this one's coming to me uh, today, I've received it, I've uh, plugged it in, uh, switched it on and there is absolutely no power, no hiss, no pop. I've tried it on the mains, I've tried it with two adapters, I've tried it with a battery and there's absolutely no sound out of it at all. So I'm pretty confident that I know that this will need um, the audio chip replaced so without any further ado we'll get on and, uh, and do that. I'm sure if you've uh, noticed from my previous videos uh, how uh, straightforward it is to take the radio apart uh, so I'll not talk too much throughout this but uh, it is just the two uh, shoulder screws one either side just behind the carry strap underneath um, just here that's the aerial screw that has to be removed as well just notice while this is uh, upside down you probably catch that in the light there the uh, rubber feet are missing on here there's just the securing nails in three of the holes and one of them's completely missing so we'll replace those as well just a little bit of housekeeping just to make it uh, back to how it should be then we withdraw the aerial pop that on one side open up the radio case using the catch on the side have a look inside and make sure there aren't any screws in there and then it's just a case of uh, levering just at the side there's a, a board here an MDF board um, just pop in something into the hole at the bottom and lever it away and then you should be able to pick it up and just withdraw it that will make removing the radio from the case really easy so there's the radio out of the case however it is still attached the orange and black wire uh, attached to the circuit board I do need to sort out the lighting in here so that you can see a little bit better it's just attached there uh, the orange and black wire it's just a plug that just pulls and withdraws from that so that's the power removed and then just inside you've got the red and black speaker wires they should just pop off if they don't pop off quite easily uh, as the red one isn't doing I'll just use a pair of pliers to use a bit more force just to withdraw it upwards and that I put the case on one side is the radio now out of the case um, just having a look inside having a look over the circuit board I'll try and bring in a bit closer you might be able to pick it up a little bit better then um, I'll put it underneath I need to sort out some better light there I think we've got there are two capacitors uh, one at the back there, blue one, blue one at the front, obviously physically different inside. Uh, the one at the front is a uh, 470 and the one at the back is a 1000. Now the top of the 1000 looks to be a little bit dished. It has uh, just, instead of being flat straight across, it has a dome appearance on the top so that capacitor will have gone and will need replacing. What I'm also expecting to find is that this chip was here, this is the audio chip, there are eight legs on there, uh, will need to be removed and replaced as well. What's probably happened historically, uh, the, the owner has probably used an incorrect power adapter, a mains adapter. Robert's mains adapters are, uh, if I show you, on one of the uh, real plugs, try and get that into focus. The centre pin is negative, the outer is positive. On most other power adapters um, that you get, it's the other way around. I'm pretty sure that back in the day Roberts did this so that if you needed a power supply for a radio, you could only get one from them. 
Um, however, it does cause all sorts of problems when people obtain these radios from various sources online, for instance, or at their local markets, or passed on through the family without an adapter. And they think that they can just plug in any 9 volt adapter and it'll work. It doesn't. It usually blows uh, the, the big capacitor, especially at the back, the 1000 and the 470, and very often the audio chip there as well. So, uh, already got the desoldering gun fired up, so we'll remove those uh, and replace them. I need to find, I've got a, an audio chip out, I need a 470 capacitor. With a little bit of foresight, I could have got these ready before I started the video. However, it's not a race. Um, got the thousand. Right, so I'll get the uh, the solder tool out. Really handy thing. This uh, made by a company called Duratool. Uh, not the most expensive gadget you could probably buy for doing it, uh, ex expensive ones are available. However, this is more than sufficient for uh, making this job a heck of a lot easier. So, as I say, it's these two blue capacitors. I'll try and get you back into shot now that I've zoomed in. One at the back and one at the front there. I'm just going to remove them and replace them one by one. It's, it's just one of my my things that I do. I don't uh, I don't tend to remove too many things all at the same time. It just helps me to keep track. This desoldering gun worth its weight in gold. It's uh, it's a heck of a lot easier than using sol solder braid or a soldering iron uh, to remove. Because once you've done that, you can just lift up the item, remove it from the board, no trouble. So we'll pop the uh, capacitor back in, the new one. This is the 470 that I'm doing first. the legs over a little bit just to help secure it whilst I, uh, I solder it on. Let's zoom back out because you can't see an awful lot there. I'll try and angle you down a little bit as well. Not the most interesting of videos but if you need to know how to do this might help. So we've got a soldering iron. heat with the soldering iron to the actual component and then melt the solder. That's one joint done. And same with the second. Heat up the leg of the capacitor and uh, just melt the solder onto there. Get my snips and cut off the legs. Just when you are doing this, just observe the polarity of the uh, capacitors. The 470, the negative is towards you as you're viewing it now, and the 1000 at the back, the negative is away from you. Get the desoldering pump again. to there as well. Already felt that capacitor just uh, drop away there from the door, that's all ready to come out.
might just be able, if it will focus, to see that that is just domed ever so slightly on the top, but that means it's either gone or it's on its way out. So we replace that, it's a thousand uh, capacitor, thousand UF capacitor, 16 volts. Um, as long as it is 16 volts, you can go higher but don't go any lower. So you can put in a, a 25 volt if you've if that's what you've got to hand. As long as the voltage, as I say, is higher on the capacitor that you're putting in, it's equal or higher, should I say. Then that should be fine. Just Again, and heat up the leg and flow the solder onto the leg and do that again with the second one. There we go. So that's the two capacitors done. Now we need to desolder the audio chip. And there are eight legs on there, so I'll just take me a moment to do. I'm trying to get it uh, better with these videos. Um, I don't know uh, how much we're in shot at the moment. Let's try getting a little bit closer so you can see. Just out of focus there. There we go. So there are eight solder joints. There are four here and four slightly higher up. They need to come out. Usually there are two of these legs on this component that are bent over. But if you remove the solder first then you can use a small screwdriver to straighten up the legs which makes withdrawing the component a heck of a lot easier. So that is chip is desoldered. I use a really small screwdriver now just to get underneath this chip here and to start to lift it up. What you will often find or what I often find doing these is sometimes uh, when they got a bit slap happy with um, glue you know with some sort of adhesive in the uh, factory and these are often glued down as well um, but they do lift up pretty easy uh, just depending where the glue is I'll try and get that back in focus um, they can be quite tricky to remove but as it's a damaged component anyway you can apply a little bit of force to remove it just being careful that you're not going to damage the tracks on the other side. So that's the uh, component removed. And we're going to replace it with a brand new audio chip. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, I do have quite a lot of these audio chips. So if anybody watching has got a Roberts Revival uh, with uh, a similar audio issue and you want it uh, resolved uh, just get in touch and I'm, I've already done that for, for one one of my viewers and he was uh, particularly happy it was a, a Christmas gift um, for his wife the radio actually belonged to his wife already uh, but it hadn't worked for quite some time and he wanted it fixed uh, to gift back to his wife uh, as a Christmas present. And just um, using the desoldering pump there just to remove just a little bit of excess solder to make this audio chip sit in a little better. at the moment it's just at an angle no, 
that's uh, it's not sitting through the uh, the through hole correctly. I'll just have a look and see if I can uh, yeah, see what that is. There's a little bit of excess solder that has uh, bridged bridged the hole, which is stopping me. Getting the component through. There we go. I removed that now. I think it was uh, part of the leg of the previous chip. There is an orientation on the chip, and on the left hand side of the chip, as we look at it, there's a little notch. And when it goes onto the board, it goes with the notch to the left hand side, which is point with the notch pointing towards the capacitors that we've just replaced. So that is the uh, audio chip onto the board now, uh, with the legs poking through, so we'll just get that soldered up, uh, and then we'll uh, pop it back together and give it some beans and find out uh, if we've resolved it. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, as I always do. This is uh, usually the way to resolve the audio issues. However, every now and again I do get a curveball one that just doesn't want to play. These joints aren't so close together but do be careful that you don't bridge them otherwise you'll end up with the same problem uh, when you apply some power to it after you've done it. If you've got these solder joints bridged at all uh, it will blow the audio chip again meaning that you have to start from scratch I give that advice freely as uh, I've absolutely done that myself before there was a solder bridge the top ones it's not as important about the solder bridge because the top the top row as I'm doing them now are all earth but the bottom ones uh, you definitely don't want a bridge but there aren't there isn't any bridges at all between those now so that's uh, that's that back on and uh, aside from needing a, a strip down and and clean. I could do it now, but I'm keen to get it put back into the uh, into the case and keep this video as short as possible. And uh, see if we've resolved it. So I'm now zooming you back out. And to put the radio that we've uh, just worked on just back into the case loosely. Uh, attach the aerial. I have an external aerial on my workshop. Um, I'm just going to connect the external aerial to that. What I should have done really is connect the speakers up first. This is the pressures of uh, doing a video. So before you put the radio back into its case, connect the speakers up. They, uh, uh, sorry, connect up the speaker. Um, it is polarity marked on the speaker. There is a plus and minus, and obviously the plus is the red, and then and the minus is the black. Uh, whilst we've also got the radio out, we can connect up the power wire once more. Then put the radio back into the case. Can't believe how much pressure doing this on video actually creates. And then just close the back up. Make sure that the switch is in the off position. Uh, I've got already got a Roberts power adapter. We'll plug that in and switch it on. Three, two, one. Go. We've obviously got power now, I can hear the hiss. We'll try tuning. Down to and there we go. So now that we know that that's working.
working. We'll switch it back off, remove the power, remove the external aerial. We'll refit the internal aerial. We push that in from the top. Get the aerial screw, which is the narrowest of the three screws that we removed earlier. Match it up, poke it through. Put the lug on the end of the white wire, which is free, uh, which is the aerial wire. And hook that over the screw internally. Attach the screw thread to the aerial and tighten it up. Not too tight. And put in the shoulder screws on the on the side which actually hold the radio into the into the case. last one on the other side and there we go that's back together close up the back door right on the bottom of the radio I mentioned that we're going to change the feet I use they are just on pins I don't know if you can see there I use because it's quite a good angle my uh, RS snips uh, to put underneath the edge of the nail and just to withdraw it. Uh, this last one might be a little bit tricky because that's quite recessed. Just put a sharp bladed screwdriver underneath that one just to move it and remove the last one. And I do have in a drawer somewhere some feet. Whenever you're taking a radio to pieces and you know that you're not going to be putting it back together, you know you're keeping it, keeping it for spares and repairs, um, do take everything off it and keep them uh, because they will come in useful one day. There's one foot, two, three, and they do just push in. There's no glue. Just a pressure fit. It's quite, uh, pardon the expression, but it's uh, quite a tight fit. And there we go. That's the feet back onto the bottom. The radio back together. The aerial done. So we'll connect that back up. And the last moment of um, recording time that I've got left there, because it records for 25 minutes and then stops. But I just had loads of contact with the A6 because at Plimpton, which is on the A6, there's some so temporary traffic a, lights a that's helping, uh, holding up all the diversion traffic. Radio 3. Radio 4. An estimated 440,000 hours. Four. Watch the lights of City and Liverpool. Radio on Lancashire. Radio 1. Classic. It's a new year, so believe in yourself. I'll We're see here the heart or smooth. Was... And back down to Radio 2 again. At Danbury, and this big queue on the M2. If you're so heading there's the Roberts the radio, the R250 with an audio chip uh, removed, M2, junction two for which is We've got one lane teeny tiny, nearly there. The A31 and eastbound two capacitors, the exit slip road is closed to Ringwood itself, and finally 470 M27 UF westbound, and the we've got a breakdown UF. between two Both and 16 three. Volts. Pass one, see. Another one for you, half an well hour. Well done, Bobby, thank, thank you very you much, I'll catch you in the next one. I've got it!